Welcome to the Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We're here to raise your confidence and inspire your creativity. Each episode, we will have a different guest who will be discussing our Raise Word. The Raise Word is a word that will encourage you or empower you and at times inspire you to explore the word a little more for yourself. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We're continuing in our Christmassy theme. Uh, We've had some lovely words. We had the brilliant Elliot Broadfoot last episode talking all about star. And today we're going to talk about something that comes up so much at Christmas, the word joy. And we have the author, Anne-Marie Alexander, to talk to us all about it. Good morning, Anne-Marie. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I know you're a a busy lady at the moment and we'll talk all about how that looks um, a little bit later on. But before we get into all of that, can I say dig into that? Uh (laughs) Clue for later. Um, What does the word joy mean to you personally? I think the word joy to me means a real lightness of heart so that there's nothing holding my heart back from delighting in everything that goes on around me. And so it is an experience, it's an ongoing experience of delight in the small things, the large things. And um, yeah, I think that's Love it. Love that. Um, I love the word delight. Maybe I have to do that another time. But if you think about it literally, and for both of us as creative writers, um, delight. I mean, it's literally allowing light in, isn't it? It's seeing those glimmers that people talk about and the sparks and the sparkles. And where better to see that than at Christmas? <laughs> totally. All the lights and and everything. But uh, Christmas, it it seems to be a time where we feel like we should be joyful. But I think it's fair to say that there's a lot of stress and things that come with Christmas. Tell tell me a little bit about what your Christmas looks like and where you're finding the joy in Christmas this year. Okay, so Christmas for me is an interesting one um, because every other year I don't get my children at Christmas and this particular year happens to be one of those and so I have really had to rethink Christmas so for me my faith will always be pivotal yeah um to my enjoyment of Christmas but actually I've had to look at the meaning of Christmas and Christmas for me is actually about giving yeah rather than receiving um so christmas this year will be a uh, christmas day this year will be going to a restaurant with my 89 year old mum yeah which is wonderful and i will be focusing on her and just making it as an enjoyable memory but i also have done things like um joined in Christmases where you give to people who are on their own and um, the homeless and so uh, for me Christmas is just about encompassing everything to do with what it stands for which is giving out hope and giving out joy to others wherever they are in whatever circumstances so whether that's one person whether that's my children whether that's my family I feel the whole of the season, that's what the focus for me is about. And the fact that, obviously, as I say, you know, for me, Christmas is about my faith. It's about the coming of the hope into this world that was Jesus. And you know what? I can I can focus on that and celebrate that any time. It will always bring me joy. Amen. Yeah. I mean, 
that the idea of hope and joy going together. I mean, one, you know, one of the reasons that we're looking at joy is because it is Advent time. So we look at hope and joy and love um, as a lovely aside. I love that the episode that we did on hope was by the brilliant David Nussbaum, who you also know really yeah, well. I do. Um, and uh, and just the idea that, what you know, when we spoke about hope, it's not wishful thinking. It's something that's very tangible. And I think that joy is the same, but there are so many different parts to joy. Um, I wonder I wonder if you can tell me a, a bit about some of the different parts, because I think that a lot of people think joy is being happy. And that's why they feel like they don't manage to be joyful at Christmas. But I think it's more than that. What do you think? Yeah, it is. One of the things I did as preparation for this podcast was actually look up the definition of joy. Brilliant. And interestingly, it comes with four parts. The first is the emotion that's evoked by well-being, success or good fortune or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. Let me rephrase that. The emotion evoked by possessing what you hoped for. Mm. Then there's the expression of joy, how you how you show it in yourself when you're feeling it. Then there's the state of joy, which is what I think most people associate with joy. Mm. And then there's the bit that for me gets really overlooked. The source. You can say something, something was a real joy to be part of or someone was a real joy. And... Um, so it's interesting, really, isn't it? Because we're at Christmas, and so you kind of go, the emotion um, of joy is about your hope coming to pass. It's about opening that present on Christmas Day that you really, really hoped for. Or yes. it's the anticipation that you might get what you hoped for. Or if it's, if it's snowing outside, there's the anticipation of building a snowman, having a snowball fight, those kind of things or spending time with your family or the food that you might eat for me it's about the hope of Jesus coming and the promise that came with him the hope that came with him mm. and all those things are about joy but I think the one that people miss the most is about the source of joy because we can be the source of joy to others mm. And it's um, I've kind of the expression I've got is like the source of water will get wet. And it's the same for us. If you start concentrating on helping others to see what they're hoping for, to encourage them and to bring joy into their lives, you will, as a side effect, bring joy into your own. Mm. You will get wet with what you give out and um so I actually think that rather than focusing on I'm not in a state of joy I'm not feeling the bliss mm. focus on what can you do today what small small thing can you do to bring joy to others because if you focus on that you will soon find yourself in a state of joy without intentionally getting there I love that um just going back to what you said about the the hope and the an anticipation <laughs> um just a very silly aside but uh every year I really anticipate and look forward to the John Lewis advert because <laughs> what I try and do is I try and take whatever song is on the John Lewis advert and mash it up with the Christmas carol and then my choir sing it so we've been doing that since I think it was Monty the Penguin was the first one that we did. Um, so maybe six, seven years ago. And what did John Lewis do this year but a piece of opera? <laughs> I can't I can't tell you how how disappointed I was like, no, I, I can't do I don't know how to mash this up. And then it was a Venus flytrap, and I thought I, I can't even do anything with that. So my my hopes were dashed, dashed <laughs> in the snow, I tell you. Um but I think I think you're absolutely right, because I think we feel, you know, the shoulds come with the emotions. I should 
feel happy. I should be grateful. I should, 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 you know, do all these things. But actually, that state of joy should (laughs) take the shoulds away. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it should. But I, I think it's down to expectations, isn't it? Yeah. And it's down to focus. And I know myself as somebody who has struggled with depression in the past. Mm. One of the ways, the biggest ways I counted it was by, if you like, putting my own expectations on hold Mm. and starting to focus outwards. And also to for me singing was a very very important one which is quite ironic really because I have the voice of a cab horse when I (laughs) sing I can literally only sing five notes in tune Mm. beyond that everything sounds the same it's really quite dire um but actually just trying to get the joy of a song picking a song that was really the lyrics were really pertinent to me yeah which in my particular case was um before the throne of god above that was my song it was in my range and i could sing it with gusto Mm -hmm. and i used to just sing it on repeat on repeat on repeat until it unlocked the joy within and um and the shoulds disappeared Mm. the shoulds disappeared because music is a really interesting thing isn't it it mm. engages the whole of your brain. Yeah. And some of the shoulds are on the left side of our brain, I think, yeah. if, if, that, if that's the right one. The, the thinking, we, we overthink things. And actually, if you can lock into music, sometimes it can engage the whole of your brain and take you past those shoulds. And that actually puts you in a state which is much more conducive to engaging with joy. And seeing the good around. Yeah. And I think going back to that beautiful analogy of the source of water getting you wet, you you can't listen to music without instantly being consumed by it, even if you don't like it. You know, uh, in in our household, we all have very different tastes. So you would think that I would be the one that would listen to maybe the classical music and my son would listen to the, the, you know, kind of chart music. And certainly that's changed a little bit now. But when he was younger, we would fight in the car because he would want classic FM on. And I would want to listen to all the, you know, hardcore hip hop stuff. Um, And that idea of, you know, music consuming you so much that you can't even tolerate it, that it actually affects your brain um, in in ways that you don't want as well as ways that you do but of course the thing with music as well is that dopamine hit that you get when you're singing a song that you really love something definitely kicks in chemically as well as emotionally and then of course if you're on your own in the kitchen Amory I imagine it kicks in physically as well (laughs) (laughs) yes I have been known to dance around the kitchen quite a lot yeah Sophie Ellis Bexter has taught us well about kitchen <laughs> discos and uh, and the need to just put on a piece of music that makes you feel joyful and and really go for it. I think that's wonderful. Um I wonder what happens though when your expectations are low when you know that um Christmas is just going to be really hard. And even giving is going to be really hard. I remember um, when I was younger, one of the things that 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 happened really every year was my my mum would have some kind of a a breakdown around Christmas because because I think I, I don't really know why. But one year we went and fed homeless people instead. Mm hmm. And. It was wonderful and it was a memory. And as a child, it definitely impacted me. But it wasn't the Christmas that other people were having. It wasn't what my friends did. And it was different for me that that Christmas. It definitely changed something. And I wonder where you find that joy when your your hopes lost. I think it's 
it is difficult. I came from a difficult background where the emotional stability in the house was very, very sensitive. Yeah. Um, I had a, um, a dad who was rather prone to explosions, I think would be the sweetest way of saying it. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. So Christmas was always on a knife edge. Mm -hmm. Um but there was but there was always joy in the moment. Mm. I would find a moment to cling on to. Yeah. That was joyous. And <laughs> ironically, um that would often be the moment where I opened um the door and there would be my chocolate stocking. It was the only day I was allowed to ever eat that much chocolate. Mm. And I would sit on the bed with my dog and just wolf my way through it. Mm. And I know it's, it's a very trite sort of thing, but it would bring me joy. Yep. Me, my dog, that it was it was just a single moment. And in the moments where Christmas was dire, I would hang on to that moment. I just remember mm. that moment. So sometimes I think joy it can be intentional. It's about picking, picking something that will give you, give you a moment, and it it stops the negative spiral. Mm. And then, for me, thereafter, it's about the hope. It's about the hope. Now, in those days, that used to be the hope that this time would pass. There would be an end to it. And I'd know that there would be an end to it. And that would be where my hope lay. I'm um I'm in a different place um now. Yeah. And my hope um tends to lie beyond that. My my hope very much lies in my faith. My hope lies um yeah, it it does. So when I face really, really negative scenarios my faith turns to prayer my faith turns to the hope that I have the the hope that goes beyond that day mm. and um yeah and as I say you know I had techniques and one of those techniques was singing yeah because I could feel I mean I, you know depression is a joy sucker yeah 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 it really is. It just yeah. sucks all joy out of life. Yeah. And it was like a cage around your heart. And I could feel it. And I couldn't feel any way to access joy when it was present. Yeah. So singing was a way of breaking out of that cage. And I would break, I would sing and sing and sing until I broke out of that cage. It was an intentional act on my part. Yeah. And then it would be a remote thing, if you yeah. like. I, I would have the freedom then to to latch on to things that were more, more joyful or to do intentional things, maybe to ring somebody yeah, and just spread joy. If I knew of someone else that was lonely to, to do something intentional for them, yeah. if I knew in my household there were others affected by the situation yeah. to go to them, yeah and you know yeah I think um I mean I remember when I was a, a teacher goodness it it was a difficult environment I don't think I could use the word joy I only taught for two years but the head teacher and I just just didn't didn't get on she made life very difficult for me but one of the things I always did was I always made her a cup of tea because yes. I knew that I loved having a cup of tea made for me and I just thought, well, I've got nothing to lose by doing it. And it did just used to, you know, break, break something in her. Mm -hmm. She, you know, and I, and I know that it was the right thing to do. Um, and I think if you can, and you have the strength to reach out to someone else and give them joy in some way, it does just, it does just break that cycle, that cycle, that spiral that you talked about. Yes. It does it just. It, it puts your thinking onto another kind of plane as it were doesn't it? it it lifts everything a little bit and I think that's that's often part of what um can create joy 
I agree. And I think it goes back to the definition of joy, doesn't it? We can really focus on what we're feeling. Are we in our state of happiness? Are we, have we got that emotion? Or we can, we can focus on being the source. Mm. And I really genuinely believe that's the most powerful place we can, we can um, go to. Joy is so important, isn't it? Thank you to Anne-Marie for all she's said so far. We really want to spread joy on the Raise podcast, so please keep listening and sharing our podcast with all those people that you can think of, particularly around this time of year. You can find us on all your favourite music platforms or anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. And please give us a five-star rating. It really helps us to stay visible so that more people can see us. Have a wonderful Christmas. Enjoy the rest of the episode. And don't forget to listen all the way to the end because we have a bonus feature. Do take me back to the stocking full of chocolate because it very much shapes uh, the next little bit of our conversation. Uh, Before we do that, even what chocolate absolutely makes your Christmas? What do you have to have? What did you have to have in that stocking that was absolutely a deal breaker? To be fair, it could have been anything. But for me, I was always given the Mars stocking. Okay. So that, you know, really bog standard. Uh, I was really grateful for that one or the um, typically the Cadbury's. But um, yeah, it was any, any chocolate. Um, I think I've got massive associations of chocolate from being little if I was hurt um and there was chocolate to hand my mum would give it to me you know um and I remember being particularly injured and mum giving me a box of Maltesers which I thought was amazing um but I also remember sneaking into a cupboard when I was probably about four or five, I, my mum used to take me to work and she worked in this giant kitchen and there was a cupboard there that had endless chocolate in it, like that they used to sell at pantomimes and I used to sneak into the cupboard and just fill my face. Wow. Just going back to teaching for a minute, when I was very first a teacher, a supply teacher, there was a wonderful, wonderful lady called Satish Dutt, God rest her soul, Uh, She was the most beautiful, incredible human being, but she had a cupboard stocked full of chocolate (laughs) and it got me through my teaching. Most definitely. Satish and chocolate was a very good mix. Um, I I always need mint uh, matchmakers at Christmas. That's a bit of a deal breaker for me. And I just hold my hands up now and please feel free to send me all of them. I am your bounty eater. I will eat your bounty. So please, if you find those bounties and you don't like them, um, I'm your girl. I, I love a bounty like any time. To be Red fair, they're very, pop- they're very popular in our house too. Oh, well, oh, so I won't get any from your house then. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a reason why we're talking about chocolate because you have written this incredible book a rampage of chocolate which very much marries up the idea of joy and chocolate and hope and uh, real life tell us all about it okay so a rampage of chocolate is the journey of a woman called Laura to womanhood through a ministry of chocolate that's Um, So basically, she uses chocolate as a crutch through life because she has a sense of unworthiness. So, And also because she's very, very accident prone. Now, um, the majority of the book is actually based on my own life, Mm. which um, is quite surprising when you actually look at the disasters that are included there. (laughs) <laughs> not to you it's not surprising <laughs> <laughs> no but I just think how can so many disasters to <laughs> one person and um and they're said to such extremes as well it's almost unbelievable 
But the reality is she uses chocolate as a crutch through life until she comes to a position where she understands her own value. Mm. And that is the basic story. It is a love story. It's also how you counter grief, gaslighting, all those sorts of things that we do encounter, being rejected, how you get through. And she gets through with chocolate, mm. with chocolate. But then and eventually chocolate, let's face it, it, actually has no genuine hope attached to it. Mm. So it only brings temporal joy. So um, it's, yeah, it's how she finally conquers life. So chocolate becomes an enjoyment, not a necessity. Yeah, because one of the things he said was that chocolate becomes a crutch, but I can't think of anything worse as, or, or, at a chocolate crutch because you're either going to eat it as you get hungry, which will make you lose your balance or it melts. <laughs> So a chocolate crutch is not the way forward. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> um, but you're right. And we all have that, in inverted commas, yes, I'm doing air quotes on a podcast, um, <laughs> chocolate crutch, don't we? That thing that we turn to for the temporal kick, the dopamine hit, the, if I just do this, it will be okay. Um and often it is temporary, isn't it? I mean, we again, we're talking about the music and, and water and, you know, that tends to be longer lasting. You can put music on, you could have it on forever and ever, um, yes. depending on your music subscription. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, and you could run the tap and the water would go for a long time. Um, but there's always something missing when your crutch is is that quick fix, isn't there? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think sometimes it, it comes with desperation, doesn't it? It's like yeah. I need I need something and I need it now. Yeah. Um, and I've certainly been very very guilty about that. And you know, I mean, I remember even being so desperate for a particular chocolate bar which wasn't released in the U in England <clears throat> until the Monday and this was the Friday and I was really really desperate and I was desperate for the the chocolate fix this particular buzz that I thought was going to come from this chocolate bar that on Saturday I got into my car and drove an hour and a half to the Scottish border Wow. went into the petrol station got five of these bars and drove an hour and a half back wow I thought you were going to say you got on a plane and went over to like America or something <laughs> <laughs> no and then I remember eating the chocolate bars I remember the, these that I've put so much hope in and at the end of the day they were just a chocolate bar I do remember that moment very, very, very clearly. I was 24 at the time. Yeah. And I, you know, but I remember that. But we do, we do allow ourselves to associate guilt with, with things like chocolate and those quick fixes. But actually, as we were saying earlier, it's that way to break the spiral and you kind of do what you can at the time, don't you? And, and it's not really worth feeling guilty because we've actually it's about initiative it's trying to make things better and we we both know that in our christian faith there's a there's a quicker way to do that but actually sometimes even that takes patience hope takes patience doesn't it amory absolutely absolutely and i think sometimes what you actually have to do is sit and decide what you do actually hope for. Hmm. Um, because it's very easy to put hope in things that are very temporal or may, may or may not come to pass. And that, that's the wishful thinking. And it's like David Nussbaum said, it, it, you need to quantify what you hope for that is steadfast that is real that is tangible even if you can't see it yeah and I think when you quantify that then 
you have a very good route back to joy. And I'll give you an example. When things have um, gone wrong for me or maybe fears come in and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm facing this situation. And, and your mind goes into that spiral that goes, this isn't going to go well, mm -hmm. you know, and it starts playing out ridiculous scenarios. I stop myself and I go, whoa, hold on. I've faced things like this before. Mm. What's happened? Where was my hope then? Where was my faith then? How does, and I draw on the testimonies of my past mm. to give me hope and, and to ground the hope that I have for the future. Mm. And um, and when I start doing that, I I feel joy rising. I feel hope rising, and joy comes back, and fear leaves. And um, yeah, because the two, oh, hope and joy, for me, always go hand in hand. Mm. And that's when I then, if you like, stop that spiral. Yeah, and I start to look forward. And that I I think is um very much what this book is really about is about stopping one of the spirals that spiral of worthlessness that yeah. spiral that when someone gets rejected they go oh well that's it I you know I I had no value I was never I was never and all those kind of thoughts that's what this book is about mm -hmm. it's about bringing back the hope that leads to joy mm -hmm. for them so I think the perfect question to ask now is what is your hope for this book? Because I know that there are big plans. So tell us about your hope for Rampage of Chocolate. Okay, so Rampage of Chocolate, the book is out there and, and um, for anyone to get. But we have, um, I've teamed up with a wonderful lady called Mary Robbins. And we have written it into a film script, Brilliant. a musical Mm. film script so bear in mind what I said to you earlier about um music accessing your whole brain yeah. it being it's a real conduit to joy mm. so the fact that this book tackles emotional subjects it lends itself very well to a musical yeah and then um, to, to to musically tackle every single one of those um subjects and to bring hope back into them mm. so um we have written the musical we've had it uh we had a panel of people who sat on it to um do a script um review with the songs there were 15 songs and one of them actually sits on a board where with the Barclays script right national script script writing competition Oh, brilliant. And every single one of them had really good feedback. Every single one of, one of them went out smiling, tapping their feet, full of joy. It had exactly the impact that we wanted. Wow. And they gave us the green for go. Thumbs up. So Mary and I are now at the point where we're packaging it together, the USBs with the with the songs, the manuscripts, and we are about to send it out to producers with a view to finding a producer to actually put this film out there because it's a message that needs to be hear, heard. We all struggle at some point with our own value and we all need joy in our lives. Amen. Oh, I can't, I can't wait. A musical about chocolate. <laughs> um, that you've written I'm, I'm gonna be all over it I'm I'm presuming we're allowed to take chocolate into the theatre to eat while we're watching it I think it will be mandatory actually <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately I don't know if you'll have any say with the actual you know but we, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it let's uh let's get it created into this incredible film first of all and then we'll tackle the cinemas and the chocolate debate later on uh it sounds amazing and uh, I, i've read the you know the original book and and love that but the the thought of it having a song for all these different things that uh laura goes through um oh i'm very excited it fills me with joy so um oh. 
Anne Marie, we are nearly at the end of uh, our podcast. One of the things that we always do is we always uh, put out a challenge uh, for our listeners to think about. Um, so I think maybe uh, a good thing to do would be just to, uh, when you finish listening to this, just sit down with a pen and paper and maybe write just two or three sources of joy, things that you can really draw on this Christmas, things that you can do if your expectations are low or you're already feeling disappointed, that will just break that spiral and uh, and give you a, a, that hope uh, that we've talked about as well as joy. Um, Amory, have you got anything to add to that? I, the one thing I would say is when I was at my most broken, I didn't think I had anything to give. But when I went out there, I just started encouraging others, even though I felt like I had no encouragement in myself. Mm -hmm. And that broke the cycle for me. So I would really encourage people that... Don't look to what you think you haven't got. Kindness, everyone can give in kindness. Everyone can give out encouragement, no matter how broken you feel personally. And it will, if you do that, form part of your healing. Mm. And I wonder as well, just as a bit of an extra fun challenge as it's Christmas, um, go and buy yourself some chocolate. <laughs> you know what your favourite chocolate bar is. Go and buy yourself some chocolate because you deserve it. You're allowed it. And chocolate is yummy. And if you can't eat chocolate, go and buy yourself another snack that you like. Even better, go and tell someone else to buy you some chocolate. <laughs> or buy somebody else some chocolate. Oh, I'm just rambling now. Just chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Just enjoy chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is there anything else that we... Uh, haven't said that you want to say before I finish with our little on the spot poem I no I I genuinely think we've covered joy and all I would all I would say in stress again is focus on being the source focus mm -hmm. on the source of your joy and being the source of someone else's yeah. and you know, and I just wish everybody a really, really happy, joy-filled Christmas. That's lovely. Okay, so we come to the bit of the <clears throat> podcast where I write a little poem. So just give me a minute while I have a think. It was dark. It was black and it felt really cold and I didn't have anybody I could hold, but I saw a glimmer and I saw a drop. So I went to the source and I tried to fill up and the water started to run. And I knew that the joy had begun and it ran through my veins and it ran to my soul. It ran through every part and it made me whole. So I grabbed what I could to fill up even more. And I went to my friends and I started to pour. And that joy was released. And that joy was a feast. And we knew on that day, it was for us all. Thank Beautiful. You. No chocolate, but water <laughs> and joy. <laughs> and Marie, it has been joyful. It's been really wonderful to talk about Christmas and chocolate and joy with you. I hope that you find some wonderful sources of joy in your Christmas this year and into 2024. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure. And a happy Christmas to everybody listening. And we will catch up with you in 2024. Thanks again, Amory. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
We've been talking all about Anne-Marie's musical and so as a special Christmas bonus feature, we are now going to hear the song. I'll hand you over to Anne-Marie to introduce it. Okay, just for you, for Christmas, to fill you with joy, here is an exclusive listen to one of our songs, which is Gonna Dig, a song which I pray will bring you lots of joy. I was made in the realms of heaven. I was forged by God above. Every part of me created by the hands of love. I was born with hope and future. I have a destiny. Every word of it pre-written and waiting just for me. I am nobody's failure, no mistake to be erased. No. I always had a future embedded in my days. Cause I was made in the realms of heaven. I was forged by God above. Every part of me created by the hands of Of his almighty hand Gonna recognize the value That he has placed in me Gonna stop apologizing Cause I am meant to be It's your hope and your future It's a treasure that's to come It's mine there for the taking Not about what I've done Because I'm gonna live with a hope and future yes. Gonna live in the promised land Gonna live in the revelation Of his almighty hand I'm gonna dig, I'm gonna dig, I'm gonna dig. Dig. 